This week, I fly on an airline that's been resurrected from the dead, and an airline who in their former life threatened to sue me as I take a flight on the UK's North Atlantic Airways. Well, good morning from a cold, miserable and damp Gatwick Airport. I only got in here about 12 hours ago, but now it's time to go home. Now I'm flying on an airline today that loads of you have asked me to fly on, but I've always been a little bit unsure and I'll explain why in a little while because today I'm heading home on an airline called Norse Airlines. First step today was to check in and it seemed like staff morale was on a high this morning. Hi, good morning, how are you? Where are you travelling on now? Uh, Miami. Travelling on Esther Visa. Oh, uh, Visa, it's in the back of my head. Send it back? Uh, yeah, yeah. that's the one, yeah. And what bags do you have on you? Uh, just my carry-on, just this one. I'll just put this on there. Oh yeah, sure, thank you. Thanks very much, have a good day. That was nice and easy. Let's go and see if security will be just as easy. Norse Premium doesn't get you fast-track security, but whenever I fly through Gatwick, I like to buy it anyway. It's just five pounds, but it can save you a massive weight in the security line. Well, that was all nice and easy. Very friendly guys here on security today, but I need to now go and get something to eat. And I think I need to give you a little bit of a history lesson about the airline I'm flying on today in Norse. See, a few years ago, there was an airline that you might remember called Norwegian, or should I say Norwegian UK, who flew Boeing 787 Dreamliners across the Atlantic as a sort of low-cost airline from here in Gatwick to places like Miami and New York. Thank you. Um, now, Norwegian weren't a bad airline as such. I flew on them a few times and they were generally pretty reasonable. I flew on them in, I think, 2019 and made a video about them. It wasn't a bad flight. There was a few issues that I mentioned in the video, but other than that, it was a pretty reasonable flight from uh, the US back to Gatwick. Put the video out. A few people commented on the issues that I'd had. I didn't think anything else of it until a few weeks later and I get an email from the Vice President of Norwegian Air UK. And I'm thinking, okay, this guy's probably messaging me to figure out how they can help me because I had a few issues and obviously the video had gone out and everything. Um, but no, the email was to say that they were going to sue me because I said things that they didn't like about Norwegian. And effectively they threatened me and said if I didn't take the video down, then they would be suing me. Great, great customer service. Um, Naturally, me being a pleasant and lovely gentleman, I replied and politely told them to go shove it and I kept the video online and didn't hear anything back because they went bust. Yes, Queen. Um, anyway, not long after, a new airline sprung up. And they were called Norse, who, like Norwegian, flew Boeing 787s, the actually the exact same 787s that Norwegian flew. Um, they operated routes from here in Gatwick across to New York and Miami. They were like a low-cost airline. They even had some of the same management as the old Norwegian airline. That's suspicious. So you can understand my hesitation to not want to fly on them again this time, but fingers crossed it might actually be all right. A good sausage. All right, time to go and get on board. Let's go and see what Norse have in store. Oh, okay, yeah, this is a long walk. Right, that's a gate 27. It's like the furthest gate to Gatwick. And they're boarding already, apparently. <laughs> All right, so they said they were boarding, but they're not boarding. It was a ruse to get everybody down to the gate. I'm worn out now. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a very big morning here at gate 27, your Atlantic Airways flight to Miami. And it was at this point I noticed I'd been given the ominous four S's on my boarding pass, which meant I'd been selected for the rubber glove treatment. Just a quick random security search for yeah. me, sir. How are you doing, sir? Hi. Good morning, how are you? Yeah, All it is, it's the US, so if I ran from screen. Yeah, of course. A quick swap of your bag. Yeah. Electronics. Yeah. It probably looks like you've got a few electronics. <laughs> yeah. Maybe your laptop and stuff. Yeah. I have an iPad for it, yeah. There you go. Hope you have a safe flight. Thanks a lot, mate. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. See you later. 
It was all relatively straightforward though, and I was soon on my way down to the plane. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Hello, good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, Excellent. Thank you. Can I go through that door? Yeah. I'm on the right Welcome. side. Thank you. Hi. Hi, yeah, good morning. Thank you. Welcome on board the Norse Boeing 787. If this seems familiar, it's because it kind of is. I've actually flown on this exact plane. This was the plane I flew on when I flew on Norwegian and they tried to sue me. Um, I got four S's on my boarding pass today, which I actually figured meant sue, 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 but actually it didn't fit me into extra security search. But um, it's actually not too bad. This is a premium economy cabin. You get a nice, decent amount of leg room. I got me like a uh, I was going to say potato chips, but I can't because everybody moans at me for speaking American. If I speak American, everybody moans at me for speaking English because I live in America. No, I can't win. Anyway, I've got my Walker's potato chips crisps there. There's my leg room. You get a blanket and a bottle of water at the seat. Quite nice. I think there's an armrest TV, which we'll go through Good in morning. a little bit. Welcome Good morning. Um, and there's my view out of the window. We sat around for a bit waiting for them to offload some bags of some passengers that hadn't turned up and after an hour's delay started our taxi out to get on our way across the Atlantic. taking off an hour late because of a passenger who didn't show up but they got rid of a bag and we're on our way walkers crisp time you cannot underestimate how good these taste after you've not eaten them in so long I decided to fire up the entertainment system and have a look at what there was. They gave out some rather crappy earbuds which I had to use as I'd forgotten my AirPods, but there was a good selection of movies and TV box sets. There's no flight map though, just a flight information screen showing our ever increasing delay into Miami, which was a little concerning as I'd only got a two hour connection there. But soon it was time for lunch. Off the chicken bread. Chicken bread, chicken breast. I'm not going to lie, it doesn't look the most appetising and it comes with a wooden cutlery, but we'll give it a go. It's very dry, very chewy. It's, it's not the best. It's time for the Noel Phillips Blue Review. Um. A bit tiny, not exactly very spacious. We've got a big toilet which is a little bit mucky down there. There's a toilet paper and a wet floor that's actually quite dirty. And then this is the sink and a nice dreamliner mirror. Um, so yeah, the meal was there, but then you're not, you've got to remember, you're not flying on an actual full service airline here, this is a low cost airline, so yeah, I guess you kind of get what you pay for to a degree, although we did pay quite a lot for this flight, I'll mention that sort of later in the video. That was the Noel Phillips Lou Review. We carried on across the Atlantic and I managed to binge watch the entire first season of The Last of Us, which was a fantastic show by the way. We coasted into Canada overhead Moncton and got a great view of Boston, followed by New York City as we flew down the eastern seaboard. The entire city of New York with its millions of people and we could just see it all of it at once out the window isn't that amazing one thing that I did find interesting was that although the flight crew were based in London the entire cabin crew were Miami based from chatting to them through the flight the premium cabin cabin crew lived in Puerto Rico and Cuba and commuted into Miami to operate these flights Thank you to this week's video sponsor, Surfshark, who always come to the rescue whenever I want to watch some British TV when I'm travelling. 
Surfshark is a VPN provider and what that means quite simply is that you can use their software to connect to the internet from anywhere in the world and make it look like you're just at home, which has some really good benefits. For instance, I could be sitting here by a sunny pool in Vietnam and um, watching some Top Gear on my phone. It lets me watch EastEnders here in the middle of the Australian outback. Oh yeah, I'll have a Castle Mine 4X, please mate. Cheers. Surfshark even lets me catch up with only fools and horses while I'm here in New York. Now Surfshark are offering you a massive 83% discount plus three months free when you use my promo code NOELPHILLIPS at the link on the screen now. What are you waiting for? Even Baby Shark approves. Right then we have about an hour until we land into Miami and a mystery box has turned up. Ooh, what will it be? Let's see. That was a bit of a letdown, wasn't it? Some sort of, oh, is it quinoa and like a bit of a tart thing? I'll have a little bit, I think. Might save myself for when I f on my next flight, hopefully, if I make it out of uh, Miami. It's fair to say that this second snack service was barely edible. I managed about a forkful of the still frozen quiche thing they gave me before my thoughts turned to me connection in Miami. We were still an hour delayed, meaning that I'd got just 30 minutes to get off the plane, through immigration, across Miami airport, through security and to the gate before they closed boarding. It was time to break out my running shoes. flight to Miami today cost me 1700 US dollars. Flights in their economy class start at just 300 though, while flights in premium with other airlines start at around $2000. Despite the delays and terrible food, I still think Norse gives good value for money if you're looking for a cheap transatlantic flight. Just be sure to take your own lunch. As soon as the seatbelt sign turned off, I took my place on the starting block, ready for the Great Miami Marathon of 2024. <laughs> <laughs> I've got global entry, so fingers crossed. So. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> unlike you, I have to wait for everyone to complain. Oh I'm... gosh, yeah. But so... I made it last time, so I should be okay. We are global and you have to say perk to come yeah. together, so that. Yeah, exactly. So fingers crossed. I might be home in time for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we're off the plane. One hour, exactly. Let's see if we can do this. Fortunately, global entry was a breeze today and I was through passport control in just a few seconds. All right, seven minutes after landing, we are through immigration, if I can find the right, <laughs> the right escalator. Now we need to get to H concourse to get my flight back to Houston. Whew. I only had to walk half of Miami airport today, but it was still crazy busy. Eventually I made it to the H concourse though, where it started to come unstuck as I'd panked on my clear membership, getting me straight through. Hi, I do, yes. Oh, right now Pre-Check is going faster. Sorry? Right now Pre-Check is going faster. Pre-Check is going faster, is it? Okay, I'll do that then, thank you. Faster, however, definitely didn't mean fast, as security took me about 20 minutes hi, to hi. get through. Make a look. Thank you. And then through to security. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? I've got 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to do this. Let's go figure it out. Of course, my next flight had to go from the furthest gate at H concourse, so I legged it through the airport to discover my fate. Would you look at that? I only think we've gone and made it, you know? Oh, there you go. We've made it. They're just about to start boarding. Wow. That was close. So there we go then, a 35 minute connection international to domestic in Miami. Is it possible? Well, yeah, just. Should you do it? Probably not. Um, and should you allow a two hour connection like I did? Well, probably not, especially without pre-check and global entry and all that lot. But anyway, that's why I've got it. I'm here now, I'm about to get on my plane back to Houston. Hope you've enjoyed this video on Norse. Let me know what you thought of them down in the comments. As always, be kind to one another and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.